Hello everyone and welcome to the greatest day in the history of online chess. Okay, I may be exaggerating a little bit, but not uh, all that much. Uh, today we will have the big Christmas arena on Lee Chess and a lot of very strong players have registered. Here you can see uh, only only some of the names. These are the top 10. So leading the pack, we have uh, Daniel Naroditsky, then the Penguin, uh, Cl Cloud9, uh, Andrew Tang. Uh, the, then in third place, there's um, Alexander Botanik, Ali Reza also joined Sergei Zhigalko, uh, international manager. Master Mat Pro, uh, Grandmaster Azaro 25. Uh, not sure who he is, but some of the uh, people have been saying that that uh, that could be Dubov. Then we have uh, TSM FTX Age, that is uh, uh, Hikaru Nakamura uh, making his first grand appearance on Lee Chess. Then we have uh, Vladimirovich 9000, I think that's uh, Andrekin, uh, Russian Grandmaster, and then Sm Sm uh, Svodmevko, who also I don't know who uh, he is, but also maybe that could be Dubov. I, I know some uh, people have been saying that someone in the top 10 here is Dubov, but these are only the top 10 and you can see the top 10 uh, here are uh, all rated above 3000. So uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, we'll see if Magnus will join, but even if he joins, uh, he will probably join under a, a different name. So he could be playing, uh, you know, under, under, um, uh, some sort of a, a mysterious alias and okay most of the people joined here because of the big prize and the Magnus um, will not join for the money so if he joins uh, it will be because he wants to beat uh, well all of these very strong players uh, so as Hikaru doesn't usually play on Lee Chess I made a limit uh, you have to play at least 50 rated games in order to be able to join the tournament so you know not everyone can just make an account and use an engine to cheat uh, if you want to cheat you have to work for your meal and play at least 50 rated games uh, which is not a problem but i'm sure uh, the the leeches bots will pick up on any suspicious play if uh, any happens so hikaru played this <laughs> the, the the 50 games required and i'm going to show you guys one of the uh, nice games that he played against uh, our mysterious person here the foreplay of course i have to wear the hoodie as uh, well uh, we have a, a hoodie guy in the uh, in the video uh, so let's uh, check it out uh, it's a very very nice aggressive game uh, very much in hikaru style as uh, well the king side pawns will be pushed uh, and uh, uh, four play is rated around 2750 on leeches so also a, a very strong player so let's check it out uh, mr four play uh, opens with knight to f3 we have the ready opening and hikaru goes for g6 we have e3 and now bishop to g7 we have d4 uh, and now d6 sort of a modern defense uh, type of opening with bishop to e2 and knight to f6 both players castle uh, and now b3 ready to uh, put his bishop on this long diagonal to counter hikaru strong bishop on g7 knight b to d7 preparing to strike in the center with e5 and bishop to b2 and already a very interesting moment uh, hikaru pushes e5 and he's basically giving up a pawn uh, which could be captured, for example, captures, 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 let's say captures, captures, and now, well, whatever you want to do, move the queen, play bishop to f5, so white can win a pawn here, but interestingly, uh, the position has been reached before some people grab the pawn, some people don't, I'm sure there's a very good reason why uh why not uh grab the pawn, even though the engine says it's okay. Uh, so here, instead, we have... Um, uh, c4 by white uh, grabbing the center it makes sense to uh, play like this because you will be playing on the queen side a lot and now hikaru advances the pawn uh, all the way to e4 so knight f to d2 and now rook to e8 we have to uh, defend our pawn knight to c3 adding more pressure to the pawn you will play queen to c2 and then really pile up on the pawn and now hikaru does uh well what he does best he starts expanding his king side and he will try to attack white's king whereas white will try to attack on the queen side and now there are some games where queen to c2 was played it makes sense you want to go after the e4 pawn but white starts with b4 immediately he wants to start his queen side expansion as soon as possible and of course uh, it is as of move 11 that we have a completely new game hikaru continues pushing we have h4 and white prevents any further pushes by playing h3 but okay this prevents the black pawn from reaching h3 but it also gives black a target if uh, you know uh, things get crazy so knight f8 we have to get uh, this knight into the game as well maybe knight to h7 to g5 and rook to e1 
uh, we have knight h to h7, uh, like we said, and now white grabs more space with d5. Now a4, b5, c5, anything can be played here. So a6 by Hikaru, and now queen to c2, putting pressure on this e4 pawn, and Hikaru defends it with knight to g5, also putting a lot of pressure on white's king side. So bishop to f1, this bishop will nicely defend these pawns, and knight to d7. Now Hikaru wants to bring his knight over to e5, and that will make it even more dangerous, because then all sorts of sacrifices will be possible uh, as you'll see so here uh, the question is can you capture the pawn now you are attacking it three times well the answer is still no if you capture it knight let's say let's say knight d captures on e4 we're gonna capture this and if knight captures we just capture the bishop and black wins a piece queen captures we're gonna capture the knight and we're up a knight so of course completely winning so white cannot go for that he plays knight to e2 and now hikaru trades bishops captures captures and now knight to e5 so uh, black having a firm grip on the position but uh, white uh, does doesn't care and this is perfectly fine for white white should in fact continue playing on the queen side this is uh, usually how these positions are played knight to d4 and now queen to e uh, f6 bringing more firepower uh, into the game queen to c2 now uh, going for the, for the pawn here, but uh, bishop to f5, nicely defending and offering uh, the doubling of the pawns, but this doesn't really do all that much. We're just going to capture it now. This is just wonderful for black. So instead, we have rook a to c1, and now again, preparing to push those pawns on the queen side, and rook to e7. And now preparing to bring the other rook into the game, we have a4 and Hikaru plays a5. He wants to undermine white's um, uh, advanced pawn structure here. And uh, here you might play b5, but then you have a hole on c5. This is uh, kind of what Hikaru wants to do. So white ignores this. He continues pushing. We have c5 and Hikaru now captures on b4. He shatters white's pawn structure here. c captures, c captures, and now queen to b3. Uh, so the b4 pawn is attacked, uh, but Hikaru goes after the a4 pawn. So bishop to a4, attacking this pawn. Queen captures on b4, rook captures on a4, attacking the queen. We have queen back to b2, and now uh, the position is as it is, uh, but Hikaru is completely winning here. But there is only one move that uh, wins him the game. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being uh, a great shatterer of white's king side. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, bishop captures on h3. That's the good stuff. And the bishop cannot be captured because, well, for one, uh, it really weakens the f3 square. Uh, but not only that, if you capture this, just rook captures on d4. And that's it. It doesn't matter. If you capture with the queen, then look at this. Uh, that's a beautiful square for the knight. So, of course, we're going to put a knight there. Knight f3 check and after. After one knight captures, we just uh, deliver another check and pick up the queen. And it doesn't help uh, if you, instead of capturing with the queen, capture with the pawn. Pretty much the same thing. Knight checks, we're going to capture with the knight. Knight captures with check. King h1, now queen f4, and you are getting checkmated. That's it. So, of course, uh, bishop captures on h3 isn't really uh, a gambit or, or an offering, or it's just a piece you cannot capture. So here we have queen b5 attacking the rook here, and he just moves the rook back. Or rather, not moves the rook back. Back. He just goes bishop back to d7, uh, attacks the queen, defends the rook, queen captures on b7, and now Hikaru continues pushing with h3. Really a powerful kingside attack. Queen to b8 with check, king g7, and now rook to c7. Uh, white has no more chances of defending his kingside. He now has to organize some sort of a counterattack, but it doesn't seem like it's uh, uh, well a very likely scenario. So here h captures on g2 threatening the bishop, bishop captures, and now bishop back to h3. And here you could capture or play whatever, but it doesn't really matter. You are completely lost here. Bishop to h1 was played, and here uh, we simply have rook captures on d4. This was always in the position, but now Hikaru plays it, simply removing one of the knights from defending the f3 square. We have e captures on d4, and now knight e to f3 with check, forking everything. Knight captures on f3, we have knight captures on f3 with check, and it was 
was in this position on move 35 that uh, foreplay our mysterious um, uh, gentleman here uh, resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Interestingly, you might think, okay, let's capture with the queen and then deliver a smothered mate, but you would be very wrong because after the bishop captures the queen, the h1 square becomes available for the king and the king has the h1 square to escape to. Even though all of these squares are covered, you know, in quick time formats, you could make a mistake like this. So be careful. So here, like I said, knight captures and f3 was played and here he resigns because the only move is bishop captures and after queen captures, there is no defense against queen to g2 checkmate. So uh, that's one of the games uh, Hikaru played in preparation for this big event, uh, something we can expect today. So hope you, all of you guys can, can make it. It's going to start 8 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Uh, it's going to last two hours and we're going to have uh, some great chess being played. Um, I'm going to try and uh, show uh, some of the games. Of course, uh, there are too many games um, at, at to show all the interesting ones, but we're going to try to cover, uh, you know, uh, at least uh, uh, so, some of the top games and um, I, uh, of course I will be reading the chat as usual you guys are welcome to any, you know, ask questions and whatever you whatever you guys feel like we're gonna have a good time uh, like I said really hope you guys can make it this is gonna be a wonderful event and uh, well uh, really uh, really glad that it's happening uh, so yeah uh, that's the game I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, Hikaru makes his grand appearance uh, on Lee Chess uh, I would like to thank Weaver Sky Music Emanuel Freitzel Duncan Weinkoll uh, William Fuller and the Ayub for contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of uh, everything that's happening in the chess world and checking up on your wonderful suggestions uh, thank you all I will see you soon and see you, see you later today uh, in the Grand Christmas Arena. Uh, see you soon.